against anybody that's talking. Roll up. They'll hear me. You just snuck in under the wire there, Kelly. <coughs> <coughs> hey? You have pit stop at Wings oh, on yeah. the way here. <laughs> oh, you did it. They call it if you get hungry, there's still pizza. <laughs> pizza. He's got his own take home. Mr. Pizza. I was thinking lunch on America. I should get some. I should start giving people to pay me to put a can in front of myself here. Pepsi. Yeah. Much would they you pay want to get sponsored? Yeah. Probably not that much. <laughs> Brittany. You could get a couple of decals on that jacket. For sure. yeah, I could do that too. <laughs> it'd, have, it'd have to be kombucha or something. <laughs> <coughs> Where'd Jesse go? I don't know, but let's start on time. Should we get out on time? <coughs> I can hear him coming out of the bathroom. Yeah. Oh, it's seven. It's great. Tie on or something. I'm to comb his hair. <coughs> there he is. Can we start now? <laughs> Not according to my watch. Yeah. Not according to mine, Not according to mine either. Seven. Not according to all our internet synchronized watches. Yeah. Richwood Road in a different time zone there or what? <laughs> Not according to the one you wound. Different time zone on Gudgewood Road? <laughs> it's seven. <laughs> we start there. Okay, folks. <clears throat> Welcome, everybody. And I'd like to call the meeting to order. And I'd like a motion to... Uh, oh, sorry. First, the Aboriginal uh, acknowledgement. We would like to acknowledge the land of which we are gathered as a traditional territory of the Tanaha, the Silex, and the Sinex peoples and is home to the Métis and many diverse Aboriginal persons. We honour their connection to the land and rivers and respect the importance of the environment to our strength as a community. And with that I'd like to know if there's any late items and there is one here and that's a um, the uh, Kootenai Lake Tourism is asking for a letter of support from the city and uh, we put that on as um, where do you want it, Sarah, at the end? Yeah, it's on the end. Okay, it's on the end of the agenda. And with that, I'd like a motion to adopt the agenda as presented in front of Council with the addition of the late item. Councilor Renwick and Councilor Page, any questions or comments? Hearing none. All in favor? Thank you. <coughs> and next is. Um, oops, sorry. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Wow. Oh, yeah, what was going on there? That's the air conditioning. Oh, we need to do something about that. So we got to um, adopt the minutes of the previous meetings. And we have adoption of uh, item 5A through D. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'll second it. Second by Councillor Anderson. Questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Carried. Thanks very much. And the first agenda item is uh, 109 um, Sprott. Let's get it up here. Here we go. <coughs> the owner document of 1009 Sprott Drive. And our one zone property has requested an exemption. Sorry, if you might. I, Jasmine, so I should declare at this time that I'm not entitled to participate in the discussion or vote on the next item of business before this meeting, and that is item 7A, um, due to reason of perceived conflict of interest, and that I wish to leave the meeting at this time and ask that I be recorded leaving. Thank you. Okay, with that I'll start again and the owner of the uh, owner occupant of 1009 Sprout Drive and R1 zone property has requested an exemption for a business license bylaw in order to be permitted as a fourth short term rental on Sprout Drive exceeding the per block density cap of three and there's an extensive report there with a staff recommendation that goes into the details of that particular street, which is um, um, the, the bylaws of Reeds is per block, but Sprout Avenue is quite a long street. So in this case, the recommendation is in front of council to approve it or deny, depending on which one you choose. So if there are any questions or comments, you can put a motion on the floor if you wish. Councillor Woodward, are you moving the recommendation or? We should move it to yeah. discuss. Conversation, yeah. yeah to, to debate. Okay, moved. Second by Councillor Page. Okay, go ahead, you have the floor. <coughs> um, 
So I, I feel like uh, for me, this the, 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 the prime piece here for me is that uh, we're making an exemption to this, and there's already a very well defined uh, um, well defined bylaw about how many uh, Airbnbs there can be in the city. So I'm just uh, arguing for that we go with what we have as a bylaw um, because if we have an exemption here, what stops another person from coming forward and another person, another person. And Airbnb is quite contentious and I think there was a lot of work done by the city to try to control Airbnb and try to uh, wrap it into our um, our, our city. Uh, so I, I would just argue that, um, that we would deny this and keep uh, using the bylaws that we already have. Yeah, so are you gonna make a motion then to, to deny? Yeah, just, <coughs> uh, if you don't approve the exemption, it's denied, right? Yeah. So if you vote this down, then, <coughs> then it's yeah. effectively denied, right? Okay. Yeah. And Alex is here if, if you wanna kinda of give Explain the- Explain the rationale, yeah, in the first place. For sure. <coughs> so briefly put then, um, indeed we do have, um, since uh, January 1st, 2017, this density cap of three per block. Um, as explained in the report, uh, typically, you know, uh, we've taken a close look at, you know, what a typical block would be, you know, in most of Fairview, most of Uphill, you know, you're looking at sort of 10 to 12 properties on average. Um, the that's not Airbnbs, no, that's properties. Properties, exactly, <clears throat> 10 to 12 properties. And then we're saying, okay, maximum three of those, you know, so about a third uh, on any given block then uh, would be uh, eligible to apply for a short-term rental business license pro drive. Um, because of the way that a block is defined, um, in the business license bylaw is uh, it's exceptionally long, right? And we're looking instead at something at 42 properties along Spro Drive. Um, so theoretically, it would be equivalent to about three or four blocks anywhere else in the city, that kind of level of density. Um, you know, Spro Drive does have, if the block would have been defined in a different way in the business license bylaw, you know, for, you know, when you're going from the, the 900s to thousands to 1100s, it would have been, uh, it would have been a permissible application. Um, but uh, but because of the definition, which you know we made somewhat simplistic, kind of you know learning from other cities that had uh, very complicated density caps, where you're measuring meters from different property lines and all these things, we try to keep it as simple for you know everyone to understand, including the public, uh, that you're talking about you know a, like a street that's uh, bordered by another street, um, perpendicular and or uh, cul-de-sac on either end. So very simplistic definition. Um, it works in you know 95% of cases, um, kind of keeping it you know to 10 to 12 properties on that block. Uh, this is uh, this is an, an exceptional case. Thank you for that. I, I just I, I still I still I still feel uh, that uh, if we start sort of splitting hairs on this piece, then other people are going to come forward and say, well, you did it there. Why not do it here? And so that's just my main argument is keeping to the bylaw. Thank you. Thank you. I would concur with um, with uh, Councillor Woodward, and I think we have a strong bylaw. Uh, it, this obviously is is contentious, and I think if we're going to, <clears throat> excuse me, have a look at at um, uh, different areas of town where the bylaw doesn't fit perfectly, then that's uh, a, a, another time. And we, I think, uh, in an area like this, we'd want to have a lot of uh, consultation from the neighborhood. Uh, so at this time, I, I would not be in support of this motion. Any further comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Alex. Thanks, Alex. <clears throat> Thanks very much. Just wait for a second for Councillor Morrison. She's getting comfortable. Yeah. Okay. okay, next item on, on the agenda is the Community Heritage Register. And as part of the Heritage Renewal Project for Ward Street Place, Nelson Cares is requesting that the animal block be placed on the City of Nelson's Community Heritage Register. And there's a extensive background, which I know Councillor's read, <clears throat> there's a recommendation, and the recommendation is that the animal block be added to the City of Nelson Community Heritage Register, and further that the staff 
be directed to provide notice of addition of the animal block to the Community Heritage Register to the property owner and the Heritage Minister as required by the Local Government Act. I'll move that. Moved by Councillor Woodward, second by Councillor Page. Any questions or comments? I just want to say they've done a heck of a job in mm -hmm. Looks great. restoring yeah. that building. It Beautiful. looks fantastic. So, Okay, all in favour? Carried. Thanks very much. <coughs> And here we have a request from the Nelson Electrical Tramway. Society has requested a letter of support from the city with regard to a grant that is intended to apply, that applies for in the future. The Tramway Society is often asked to provide letters of support from the city along with the grant application funding request. So they're asking us to support their request and uh, there's a motion there that the city provide a letter of stating that it supports the values of the Nelson Electric Tramway Society op operations in the city of Nelson. So I'm just trying to figure out why that was worded like that, Kevin. Is this going to be a sort of a blanket letter for yes. history or <clears throat> for the rest of the... Yeah, I think in any of their yeah. grant applications. So they want a yeah. kind of a sort of a standard letter that they can include as opposed to a specific letter for a specific grant. So what <coughs> just a uh, question would be... Um, would we leave that open or would they have to notify us of the particular grant they're applying for because grants sometimes can trigger us? Mm -hmm. We could ask, yeah. could require that. You could add that to the, you know, to the resolution um, contingent on the society notifying the city before applying for any such grants. That'll be up to council if they. Yeah. <coughs> I think it'd be prudent to do that. No, rather. yeah, I'll, I'll do that. <coughs> Yeah, that makes sense. So then that that uh, motion has changed to include that wording, so I need a mover and a seconder, please. I'll, I'll second that. Councillor Woodward, Councillor Morrison, second? Yeah, it was moved oh, by Councillor Anderson. It was moved by Councillor Anderson. But the, uh, the amendment is amendment. friendly moved, enough yeah. to put in there? Yeah, yeah. The amendment, okay, yeah. all right, okay. All right, so I'll just, we'll just vote on the whole thing with the extra wording because it's friendly enough that yeah. it'll work. So all in favour? Carried, thanks very much. Okay. And the Nelson District Arts Council are up next. Uh, the Nelson District Arts Council has proposed that a portion of the rear exterior wall of the Nelson District Youth Centre be made available for the use for the community mural wall. As the Youth Centre is building is owned by the city, a council decision is required to either approve or reject the proposal. And there is a recommendation, folks, that the city approves the Nelson District Arts Council request that the portion of the rear exterior wall of the Nelson District Youth Centre be made available as a community mural wall and be monitored by staff for at the city of Nelson and District Youth Centre. So we need a mover and a seconder if you're in favour of that. Councillor Renwick, Councillor Woodward, if there's questions and comments. Question. Councillor Anderson. Um, did, did you talk to the neighbours? <laughs> I like to make a nice, nice yeah. entrance into these things. Um, yeah, so actually the wall is going to extend the full length of the youth center and go on to the Whitewater building. And Whitewater's actually asked us if we'd like to even go around that corner as well. So they're really, really on board with the whole thing. Okay, awesome. So now it's bigger. <laughs> Yeah, bigger. And just, it's going to be more cohesive. People are going to be able to come and do beautiful, full wall pieces instead of going up and doing, you know, little bubble tags at four o'clock in the morning. They're going to actually be able to dig in and, and create some, some nice full scale pieces of art for their portfolios. Very good. Councillor Page. Yeah, when I saw this, my question was to go even bigger. Have you talked to any of the other neighbors down that down that lane? No, because we wanted to start kind of small and see what this is going to happen as like a trial project for this year and kind of balance it out, make sure that the police are satisfied and that the youth center staff are all all on board. And then once we, um, after this next year, we can kind of see where it takes us, see what happens with that development that's going to be happening across the, uh, the uh, alley from it. So yeah, I think it's going to be a really nice place and a really nice space for us to kind of reclaim that area mm -hmm. and get people kind of really, yeah, spending time back there. Mm -hmm. That's sweet. Thanks. thanks very much. Okay. Thanks very much. All in favor? Gary, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, next up is the wood stove program. Okay. Uh, 
So the wood stove, stove exchange program, I'm sure you've, you've read this, this has been ongoing for a number of years. And uh, there is a um, recommendation here that the City of Nelson support the 2020 wood stove exchange program by advertising the program and committing funds in the amount of $100 per stove exchange to a maximum of 20 stoves. And you can see there the uptick has been no screaming heck over the last little while, maybe because everybody did it um, when it first came out. Um, the only question I have is... Can we move the motion first? And yeah. I got I just had a question. Play the for questions. <coughs> okay, fair enough. Go ahead. Somebody want to move it? I will. I'll move it. Right. Councillor Randwick. I'll yeah, second it. Like Councillor Morrison, yeah. Go ahead. Well, and it was to your, to your point, Mayor, uh, of the uptick and whether or not uh, we want to potentially increase the amount of money that we're offering for individuals to take in because it's a fairly hefty price tag and without any do we even have numbers on how many stoves we have left like montreal is moving to a complete <coughs> ban if you don't meet the regulations and requiring registration of wood stoves and then I, i'm just wondering if you want to go further yeah that's a, that's a good question <clears throat> i'm not sure who's monitoring this at the end of the day really yeah i don't think we've taken a um, inventory of, of what wood stove each um, individual has. Um, you could try it on a pilot. Does you know two hundred dollars uh, per stove mm. create um, more movement on that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was my thought. Councillor Woodward, through the through the chair, I was I was just going to say because the uptake was fairly low that we could just say we would do ten at two hundred rather than twenty at one hundred. Or just match what the province is doing, 250 and 400 to pay based on loan, and don't necessarily have a cap on it. Like the numbers have been so low. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think there's. I'm thinking myself. I'm not sure we're that far away from the days so where we need to move away from, from the wood stores because of the health reasons. I know, like in the uphill area there, when yeah. in, the, in the winter time you can Fair barely you. breathe. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I think maybe it's something we need to start looking at is, is should we even have wood stoves in our community if they're, if they're not compliant at the very least or have a period of time where they're phased out over say a five year period because it's a, it's a health issue for a lot of people as well as um, the carbon does. So it's something to think about. Yeah, my understanding is, you know, that's why the rebate is to, you know, to mm -hmm. have these high efficiency that yeah. don't have that challenge with the air Air quality and and uh, par particulate that you know those old stoves do. Mm -hmm. Well, I would m amend this to instead of saying a hundred dollars to match the province's rebate. <coughs> up to up to uh, it, the province's rebate is two fifty for uh, certified one and four hundred if it's uh, it meets the newer certification. There's uh, just I would just change it and say we will match the province's rebate. But you did mention a number of stoves, so. The cap. Well, the I'd cap say match. The, oh, <coughs> like we need a, we need a cap on that. I think mm -hmm. per year. Are we going to get it? Five hundred of those. Well, if we do. Well, I would I would say to start off, maybe we'd have a cap at ten, with a higher price, and see how that goes this year. And if there's a real uptake, then we could raise that. But let's make it twenty. We might not even hit it. <coughs> well, it's quite a it's quite a jump in the. It's ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars. <laughs> do we have uh, to uh, to CFO? Do we have money in the budget? No. <laughs> <For this. laughs> the one hundred dollars uh, being uptake for the last couple of years, it hasn't been an issue, right? But this isn't so, certainly something. Again, if I understand correctly, it is for twenty twenty. So I don't know what when the timing of this is, or whether or not it's like here's what we want to do for twenty twenty. Then we would. Again, put that into budget deliberations on what might come of it. <clears throat> How much you want to put there? And I think it'll be their fiscal. So it'll be 19 to. Is it? Yeah. Again, I don't always. We got 2018 slash 19. Mm -hmm. So that's the province's mm -hmm. fiscal. Right. <clears throat> so shall we? So we would suggest, yeah, we would support 10 at the provincial and see where it goes. So and, that goes. And, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, if there's more demand, then we can always come back to council and, and say, you know, this is 
proven very popular? Or do you want to uh, put some more money into it? Uh, you know, when you create a cap, you also create some urgency around mm -hmm. it that mm -hmm. people will try to mm -hmm. uh, try to act. Yeah. I'm just a little torn on this. I'm not suggesting we not do it, but I'm a little torn. I'm getting to the point where I'm thinking maybe they're not popular at all. What stoves? That's my thinking. So for what it's worth, but we'll spend the money then. I mean, you know, it's fair enough. But we might want to start thinking about that because the health hazards are huge mm -hmm. in the winter time with inversions, etc. So, but anyway, you're you're going to make a motion, um, Councilor Page. Yeah, I would okay. move that we change the one hundred dollars to match the province's rebate and cap it at ten. Okay, I second that. Second by mm -hmm. Councilor Woodward. Okay, Can no, I? you wanted to. Um, I would agree with that, although I would like to add a caveat to that motion that if we're going to step up to the 250, that said stoves be purchased locally. Oh, that's interesting. I'm not sure they can, though, can they? Do that? Yeah, I don't know if we have authority to <coughs> regulate where you can purchase things. No. Is there a local supplier at the moment? Mm -hmm. there's, there's several. Two. There's several. Okay. Can we make it up? Can we make the language soft around that in terms of yep. that? Pref preferable. Pre preferable or something like that. Can we use one of those kind of words? That right. Yeah. Preferably purchased locally. Okay yeah. with you? Yeah. Okay, you got that. All right. All in favor? Sure, thanks. <clears throat> so we're on to the official community plan. It's next, and this is zoning for 706. Heritage Lane, and the property owner has applied for to redesignate 706 Heritage Lane from a multi-unit residential to a mixed units core in the official community plan, and they rezone property from R3 downtown residential to the new zone MU6 downtown mixed use. The purpose of the application is to rehabilitate and convert an existing building into eight micro suites with one commercial unit at grade on Heritage Lane. The application requires an amendment of the zoning bylaw, the OCP bylaw, and the off-street parking and landscape bylaw. And there is a recommendation here, folks, and I'm sure you've read through the preamble. It's quite extensive. Mm -hmm. And thanks for the work from our development services staff putting this together. And there's a bit of a long list of recommendations here, so. <coughs> I'll leave it to council to. I think you have to do them individually. We have to do them individually. Time. Yeah. Yeah. I'll move the first one. Okay, and is that the official community plan and amendment bylaw number 3462 2019 be introduced and read at first and second time by title only? Did you second it, mm -hmm. Councillor Anderson? Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Thank you. <coughs> number two, the zoning amendment bylaw. Second that the zoning amendment bylaw number 3463 2019 be introduced and read at first and second time by title only. Mm -hmm. Moved and seconded by Councillor Morrison and Councillor Anderson. Second. Questions or comments? All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Um, number three. Oh, move. Staff redirected. I'll, I'll, I'll move. I'll okay. Move that. Number three. Okay, the staff be directed to schedule a public hearing of the official community plan amendment bylaw number 3462 2019 and the zoning amendment bylaw 3463 2019. Give me a second. Questions or comments here? Yeah, we'll second. Second. second right there. All in favor? Carry. Thank you. And the next one is the um, number four, the off street parking and landscape amendment bylaw number 3464 2019, introduced and read a first and second time by title only. Mm -hmm. Mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Renwick, Councillor Page, questions or comments? I had a question. You have a question. Um, Alex, mm -hmm. and maybe this is for the owner. I know you guys have done a lot of discussion and ways to deal with the parking situation up there. Mm -hmm. uh, have we asked and seen if it's appropriate to make the stalls up there electric ready? Not necessarily electric, but have them plumbed for it? Um, we're, that's an interesting question. We're actually in, in talks with another uh, developer as well in town, kind of sort of a similar situation on some other project that hasn't been applied for yet um, around that. Uh, it's, um, 
a bit more complicated to do in this situation as well, given that the, um, the there isn't really parking directly in front of the property as well. And for the actual charging infrastructure uh, to be sort of accessible from the street, it has to be on the right of way, um, which means, according to Nelson Hydro, the information I got from them, that uh, it would have to be, uh, you know, the, the bill would for the electricity use would have to go to the city of Nelson. Um, so... Also at this time, the, the so the parking proposal, the the donated car share vehicle, uh, isn't an electric one. Um, the price differential would be quite would be quite great, but uh, in short, no, there hasn't been that discussion. So they, it, you're showing here that you're that you're exempt from parking pretty well in that building. So mm -hmm. the idea is, of course, if you didn't have parking, you wouldn't have a car, so you wouldn't need to charge it. Is that sort of where you were? Well, I suppose um, I suppose that the question then would ultimately be, you know, s saying that there are, you know, there are going to be, uh, according to this proposal, then a few uh, street parking permits available, um, f you know, for residents of the building. And again, one car share vehicle as well, too. You know, at this time, you know, in this generation, simply, uh, you know, a gas uh, powered vehicle. Um, so theoretically, it could be used, you know, if that kind of thing existed. Um, on the other hand, I've also been talking in, in recent weeks with uh, the Accelerate Kootenays folks, um, the Community Energy Association, who are driving around the Kootenays all the time promoting electric vehicles, um, because uh, I had contacted them because um, there, yeah, there are a few cities that are doing these sort of pilot projects of having electric vehicle infrastructure um, charging, you know, right on uh, you know residential streets. Um, they're actually, Accelerate Coonies is actually kind of recommending against that at this time, uh, given how little uh, electric vehicle ownership that we have in the Coonies. Uh, and what they found, I guess, in other communities in British Columbia right now is that um, electric vehicle owners have actually asked to not have it because uh, it makes people get mad at them. Um, for having these sort of dedicated spots, particularly when you're looking at, you know, a, a situation like Victoria Street, um, where parking is, you know, generally quite congested with a two-hour parking, etc. Um, it would be a situation where um, not only would there probably be a lot of bylaw infractions, but anyway, at any rate, that was actually the advice from Accelerate Cooties is to not move forward on that at this time. That that's a very difficult street. At mm -hmm. the best of times where that building is because then the street splits there mm -hmm. and the neighborhood uh, i think you'd have a big big backlash if you were to put the, char the charging station on that street because right now it's virtually impossible for the existing neighbors to park uh, let alone adding mm -hmm. <clears throat> and this proposal clearly indicates that the uh, building is is moving forward without parking mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. uh, it's looking at a tenant clientele that would potentially not have a vehicle because the units are only a couple of hundred square feet mm -hmm. to start with so i think just for clarification appreciating that we're not quite there yet it's more about putting conduit uh and pipe yeah. not, not even necessarily wiring but to be prepared for because we're doing development there anyway but getting power out to that location so it can be pulled through later on mm -hmm. yeah, it might, sounds like you've been thinking about it it might be easier once in this one though yeah, it um, the technology does kind of you know get cheaper over time as well too. Um, having a hard time kind of thinking about it on the fly. You know, in this situation again, you'd be looking at you know if you're tying it to the development, you'd be looking at how that conduit then I guess being going straight to this property's um, you know uh, meter, and then it would be connected you know to the right of way. Uh, so again, they would be the property owners would be built for whatever usage comes out of this. Um, you know, I guess alternatively, maybe what you're getting at then would be a situation where the the, the applicants then pay for that to be installed, um, but then at the end of the day, uh, it would it would be yeah public infrastructure um, or public infrastructure ready, so to say, um, because it would be a charging station that's on it's on, it's on city land, right? So it's a little bit it is a little bit more complicated with this situation. Um, I couldn't kind of come up with a solution just like that right now. I appreciate it. Thanks, thanks, Alex. Anyway, good questions, though. <clears throat> Thanks very much. Uh, you may not be done yet, though. <laughs> <laughs> that was my only question. Okay. Number right. four, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so we had a mover and a seconder. All in favor? Carry it. Thanks very much. Number five is the off street parking and landscape amendment bylaw number 3464 2019 be read a third time by title only. Move. Councillor Morrison, Councillor Anderson. All in favor? Carried. And the staff be directed to. 
restrict the street parking permit eligibility for 706 Heritage Lane to four permits and require compliance with the car sharing components of the 706 Heritage Lane parking proposal as a condition of future development of mm -hmm. future development permit. Moved by Councillor Anderson, second by Councillor Page. Any questions or comments? Hearing none. Oh, oh, what? Um, yeah, I just um, going and touring the building, um, and with the 200, 200 square feet to two. Yeah, two hundred thirteen to three hundred fifteen or so. Yeah. Right. Um, I think you know you're you're probably going to have a, a turnover there. I mean, people are going to be there for a while, but you know it's it's going to be for a single person most likely. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm thinking that the parking issue really shouldn't be that much because it's, it's not like uh, people are staying there for five years or whether there's, there's a family in there or so I'm just feeling fairly fairly confident that parking shouldn't be uh, that much mission do you, do you feel do you feel confident in that? Um, again the so, so this this recommended then motion then specifically then is saying well you know because there's no um, there's no off street parking on this site, um, you know. So theoretically, under the traffic bylaw, then they'd be you know each unit because they are separate dwelling units would be entitled to um, to one you know parking permit, right? Whereas currently it's um, even though historically it was a boarding house, currently it's sort of registered um, as a as a single family dwelling. Um, so one parking permit. So now we're going from an increase from one to eight on a very small frontage that actually doesn't have any off street or street parking that's directly abutting it, uh, given how it kind of situates it's sited at the inter intersection there. So um, yeah, like those those points are you know there's probably going to be a turnover. That, that's not to say that people who turn over don't have vehicles. You know if they're if they're coming through if you're moving from uh, you know one small community to another by means of Nelson, um, you might have a vehicle right still. So. Um, you know, uh, the the parking proposal then is to, uh, you know, is, is pretty, it is, it is a congested area, still recognizing that, um, you know, it is, uh, it, it is a housing development and uh, it would be nice to be able to kind of come halfway and, and be able to offer, you know, some parking to some of the units, but to kind of put sort of a line in the sand and say, well, um, especially given the car sharing, you know, component of this proposal as well too, that, that there, that there's a limit and, um, in order to sort of respect the existing neighborhood. Thank you. Thanks very much. Okay. Uh, seconded? I was going to second it. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, all in favor? Thank you. Onward and upward. Thanks, Alex. Uh, the next one is um, Lakeside Drive. Okay, and this is uh, 900 Lakeside Drive and uh, an application to rezone ward engineering on behalf of the land landowner Sun Holdings is applying for a rezone at 900 Lakeside Drive from CD1 uh, Kootenay Landing Zone to MU2 Waterfront Mixed Use Residential and Commercial Zone for the land portion of the lot P2 Water Use Zone for the portion of the lot extended into Kootenay Lake and P1 Park open and recreational space for the waterfront walk, walkway. And there's an attachment that explains the bulk of this to you folks, which I'm sure you've read. And the current zoning of this lot is tied to a comprehensively planned site-specific development for a five building and marina that includes a multi-use residential, seniors, residential and retail restaurant office and marina. The applicant feels that the current zoning of this property is unworkable and would like to rezone back to the same zoning as the rest of the waterfront and other facility development. And um, the background information by our planning department is all here, folks, and I know you've read it and re read the details, and there is a recommendation at the end if council wishes to move the recommendation. Mover and a seconder to move. Councillor Renwick, second by... Second for discussion. Councillor Page. Questions or comments? Maybe uh, Pam speak to um, why we're recommending this approach. So I have a really quick presentation, if that works. Sure, certainly. Okay, good, yeah. great. Okay, so this is a rezone for 900 Lakeside Drive, <clears throat> and it's, uh, the applicant is Ward Engineering on behalf of the landowner, Sun Holding 3, and they are asking to rezone from the current zone, which is CD1, Kootenay Landing Zone, to... 
the standard waterfront zones, which are MU2, waterfront mixed use residential and commercial, P2 for the, the water use zone for the water portion of this lot, and P1 park open and recreational space just for that walkway area. Um, Again, as, as the mayor has talked about, the applicant doesn't think that this zone is all that workable and they would like to rezone back to the standard zoning to facilitate development. So again, that just points out where those uh, zones are, the MU, MU2, the P1 and the P2. Uh, again, as the mayor has talked about, that CD1 Kootenai Landing Zone, it's a very comprehensive zone. It's got five phases, five buildings. Uh, and it's, there are very specific guidelines attached to all of, all of that development. The proposed zoning, uh, MU2, that's really to accommodate residential development and commercial. The P2 is for water uses and the P1 is really just for that walkway along the waterfront. The impact will be a reduction in height from six stories to four and a half. And again, typically that means a reduction in density, but it doesn't, meet, doesn't need to be a reduction in density. It could be just smaller unit sizes and potentially you could get the same number of units. Uh, it does re uh, reduce the amount of commercial there, so basically we're really getting rid of office and retail and some other commercial uses. So what you'll have now is multifamily residential, restaurants, pubs, live work, and in the live work you could have the work part of that could be off office or custom indoor manufacturing, um, care services, short-term rental, and uh, cannabis retail is also on there. Those standard waterfront zones were really developed to implement council's objectives uh, in the OCP, so they are definitely in alignment with the OCP and the Sustainable Waterfront in Downtown Master Plan. Really, we're trying to facilitate development down on the waterfront. As we talked about the other day on our tour, really we're trying to get that kind of increased uh, vibrancy through residential, commercial, um, and cultural. We want more density down on the waterfront that rezoning it back to these standard zones will, will help with that. I think it'll all be, also be a more efficient use of city infrastructure and potentially more property tax revenue to pay for the upgrades to the infrastructure in that area. And they did the standard um, open house advertising <coughs> the newspaper, hand-delivered flyers to the adjacent neighbours. <clears throat> uh, people who attended were in support of the development, as was APC. So that's it. So I just want to remind Council, if you look at the recommendation, mm -hmm. that there is a process that follows through from tonight should you decide to move forward with this. Mm -hmm. So it's not like we're saying yes, sure. to the we're allowing the public to have their their opportunity when we create the public hearing process. Right? Correct. Yeah. Okay, so you had a question, Councilor. Um, so for, for me personally, the, my main concern is the marina. Okay. Um, I feel like, uh, you know, I've been here most of my life, People come here to have the Kootenai experience, and a big part of that is, uh, you know, not having um, motorboats roaring around, jet skis, that that kind of uh, activity. Some is there, of course, of course, there's some, and that's fine. Uh, but do people do come here for that kind of quiet? And um, I think it concerns me that allowing another large marina to go in. We're talking, and according to the agenda package here, an unlimited. Uh, size of marina and um, so let's just say there's a hundred slips down there or 80 slips down there that's that many more boats boats roaring around jet skis gas oil and so I guess that's my main concern um, do you have any comments on that so it does right so it doesn't limit the number of slips but what limits it is the size of the parcel. And so the parcel is similar in size to the Prestige Marina. So that's typically what you're looking at. But although I don't know how many slips are on that. Could, that. could I just ask for, for a moment here? Um, <clears throat> again, I just want to revert you back to the resolution. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, if you want to stop the project in this tracks tonight, mm -hmm. you have that right to do that. But uh, it, it'd be my take, um, you know, just based on my knowledge base, that we do have a process here that I think allows the community sure. to give us feedback on what their thoughts are. And then we have an opportunity for that very discussion okay. that you're having tonight. I don't know if you wanna. I guess I just, I just wanted to hear a little more about the idea of the marina. Cause yeah. it, it is a, it's a big, it's a big uh, portion of this on the waterfront, which affects a lot of people. So I just wanted your feedback on. Correct. 
on so, the marina? So the OCP takes a very balanced approach to motorized and non-motorized vessels. And so because we have implemented a moratorium on all docks in the city, so you can't, if you have a lot next to the water, you can't put a dock in place. And so to balance that out, in the OCP it says a balanced strategy, and so we identified a number of areas along the waterfront that we zoned as P2, so you have a balance of, so we consolidated all of the motorized vessels into those P2 lots along the water. And so to kind of keep that activity in a certain area, and this was one of those areas. Um, so John's Walk is an example. Doesn't yes. allow for docks if you have Does not. or Sprott Drive, or, right. and as that project is built out all the way to Red Sands, that same um, zone, the same OCP uh, terminology applies to that mm -hmm. full piece of property. Right. So as as was said, to accommodate for that, mm -hmm. but you know some people want to have a boat, obviously living on the yep. lake, then it's condensed into the one area. I mean, this is one of those things where we could look at the P2 zone sure. uh, and put it on the work pro program and determine whether, you know, maybe we have too much P2. Yeah. And maybe we do need to limit um, some of the sizes in there. And I just want to state, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not at all against motorized boats. I'm just saying that, you know, we do have a, there is a reason why people come here from all over the world to, to have that experience of some quiet and some mm -hmm. nature. And, and, of course, boating is part of that. But it's just trying to find that balance between... Yeah keeping that portion of our area and having development. That's all I'm saying. Okay, thanks very much. Councillor Page. Yeah, I, I actually share Councillor Woodward's concerns uh, of, of grouping the two zones together. I, in my preference, I believe, would be to decouple the, the land part of this from the water part of this, because a lot of consultation and process went into what the community found acceptable in that P2 zone as it currently is in the consolidated development um and i do think maybe it is maybe as you suggested it's a t it's something we want to look at in terms of what we're allowing within the p2 but i'm not concerned today anything that's being proposed within the land at least for opening it up for options mm -hmm. but the water water there does concern me as well of just having another another marina or and not having it come back to this table to say you know is this too much or too little of a marina so you like the fact that it had a limit of 60 stalls on it and a restaurant i like i like the plan hmm? for that for the one that was in there that was acceptable to me i, I i'm uncomfortable uh saying well we're going to take all the limits off and it could be pretty much anything we'll, we wouldn't even see it come across our table right okay like, is that an option to, well, again, on one hand? Again, again, I want to bring you back to what's on the table in front of us. Yeah. And if you want to make, the only decision you can make tonight is to say, no, we're not going to move this forward. Because that's what public participation is about. We're giving the public the opportunity to give us feedback on the project. Mm -hmm. So now we have, you know, unless your mind is going to be changed by the public input that you're going to receive back from this, you've already taken a stand on this project before it's gotten to the public process. And, you know, we take a lot of pride in having these public hearings for that very reason that we are responding to the needs and the aspirations of our community rather than our own individual views. And those aspirations may override what we think is right for the waterfront or anywhere else in town. So I would just suggest that potentially we, we just go through the process, see what kind of feedback we get uh, before we get caught in a position of... Uh, uh, of uh, Defining it. You know, moving the project forward or not based on tonight's conversation because this will be a bigger conversation and it's been my experience at this table that that piece of land has been a big conversation every time it's mm -hmm. come to this table mm -hmm. one way or the other, as I'm sure you're yeah, I'm sure you're well aware of in the past. So do we have a project <coughs> coming forward? Can I just um Pardon? Can I just add No, we had we had various versions of yeah, development yeah. on that property and each one of them have had extensive public participation. So I just want to add um, what this is doing is um, adopting council's existing policy on the waterfront, which is did come out of extensive um, consultation, public consultation. So you have policy in place. This isn't someone asking to go away from policy. This is actually someone asking to go in conformance with that policy and because Pam indicated that's the place to look is that policy that you have is that still appropriate as opposed to um, 
looking at this individual um, development and, and saying I want to start to restrict on an individual um, development because you know this as as uh, Pam showed in the zoning map isn't just this property it's a number of um, properties along the waterfront so really your my suggestion is looking at this from a policy perspective and saying um, you know revisiting that as opposed to this particular um, project and this isn't they do not have a specific project that mm -hmm. identifies they're going to build 100 slips or anything so so I think there is some time to look at your broader policy and and you know really you know this is you know Development services and the city is always in this um, place of you zone for a specific development, which happened in this case, or do you uh, adopt, you know, um, broader policy of what you want to see in the, in that broader range? And I think uh, certainly what I'm seeing over time is, you know, you're way better off, you know, developing that mm -hmm. strategic as opposed to starting to try to limit an individual development and and if and that's why we did that tour is what get is what getting your is things getting built out there really fit with with what the vision for the community is and if it doesn't then you want to start to look at your policy and say we're not you know um, driving people in the right direction so um not well that would be my advice you know look at this you know they're going back to what your existing policy are is <coughs> and if that policy isn't something that you think should be revisited then that's the job of our staff to revisit and give some options and and you know again go out to um, community and say you know here was the vision that we heard from you here's how we reflected it in zone <coughs> and um, do you want that change and there was a there was a neighborhood meeting on 24th of June was it? yeah and again um, you know I think you're in better, a better place by looking at that broader policy than starting to. As soon as you start to drill into specifics, okay. then then what do you do with the next one? Is it is it we have too many as as Pam indicated too too many uh, places for P two, mm -hmm. and we should limit that. And do you want to say it should be here or not there? Those are you know I think those are the questions. Mm -hmm. You know where is it appropriate where it's not? Um, obviously in this case you have. Um, you know, a, a marina and a boathouse right in this area. Is that our consolidated area where this type of activity happens, or do you want it dispersed? Mm -hmm. So those, I think, are the broader uh, questions you can ask. I'm prepared to move the first one. Yeah, that the zoning and bylaw amendment number 3468 2019 be introduced and read at first and second time by Jenny. Second. Second by Councillor Morrison. Any further questions or comments? Hearing none. All in favor? Carried. Thanks. And the staff schedule of public. Oh, sorry. The second one. Yeah, yeah. Let's okay. The and the staff schedule second. of public. Okay, you're moving it. <laughs> yeah, let's move the second. <laughs> okay, thank you. All in favor? Thank you very much. Thanks. Good questions, though. And as Kevin said, we have an opportunity to discuss that mm -hmm. other piece that uh, surrounds this, uh, the water, rather than the project. Yeah. <coughs> thank you. Thank you. Because as you said, Councillor Wardwood, yeah. you like the project, but you're a bit concerned about the water piece. So, yeah. So we look at it's an important part of our, yeah. of our uh, city. Mm -hmm. All right. Onward and upward. Um, wildfire <coughs> prep bylaws. And this is, again, uh, some housekeeping. Uh, we've already gone through this. And um, move the first re staff recommendation. A second. Uh, Councillor Morrison. And. Uh, Councillor Anderson moved and second. Any questions or comments on this change? Okay. All in favor? Carried. And number two? I'll move it. I'll Councilor second Anderson it. Anderson and Councillor Morrison. <coughs> All in favor? I had just a comment. We had talked about um, staff having available um, information for the general public in terms of looking for assistance with appropriate plantings and such. And are we in the process of being able to have that? Information available. Uh, Sebastian's here. Sebastian. <laughs> oh, he's leaving. <laughs> Certainly, there's not Sebastian's department. Yeah. Oh, it is. <laughs> I just didn't want to get locked out of the office. I forgot my keys. <laughs> <laughs> Flash lock. 
dropped out of my house. Um, yeah, so so far we've done some uh, some media release on um, on the wildfire information. So just uh, releasing that there's new regulations and where detailed information can be found. Uh, the fire department I know has created a guide in terms of what uh, what kind of fire uh, safe plants we have. Um, that would be uh, good for our type of climate. So that exists as well. And the fire department is continuing to do uh, the door-to-door -door, uh, fire smart uh, assessment for anyone that uh, is interested. So um, you just, uh, they, uh, any resident can call the fire department and they'll do that at no charge. Follow, sorry, follow up um, through the chair to staff. Um, so, that's that's great that the fire department's doing that. I'm also wondering if we have um, reached out at all to engage any of the local nurseries, because one of the big successes of the EcoSave program was <coughs> that um, we went out and we talked to Aglios and Home Hardware and made them aware of the fact that we had this, this change. And I think it's important that um, that we engage a little bit with with nurseries to say, look, this is we're we're trying to move in this direction, and you know people do go there and do whole landscaping plans, and it would be good for them to say, well, you know, you live in X, and maybe the idea would be so. I'm just hoping that that in the process, I don't expect it to be done today, but in that process that we reach out to those businesses where people are going to go and actually buy these products <laughs> as well. So I think that would be another nice step because that's definitely what sets our EcoSave and it's the success of that EcoSave program apart from other communities that have tried <coughs> something like an EcoSave in the past. I think this could be applicable in this situation as well. Good point. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and we have talked about that to uh, do that outreach. Okay. Any further questions or comments? Hearing none. All in favor? Sure. Thanks very much. Thanks, Bachelor. Uh, onward and upward. So thanks very much. Uh, affordable child care for a 10-day plan and basically what we're asking what we're putting forward here is after a presentation from two people in the industry from our community representing a number of others um, we're asking that uh, basically the council support the provincial position on $10 a day child care and there is a recommendation there there if somebody wishes to, to move, move it moved by councillor Woodward second by councillor Page any questions or comments hearing none all in favor Thanks very much. Uh, Sports Ambassador is the next one up. And um, uh, April of this year, staff brought forward a request for a number of local organizations requesting establishment of a Sports Ambassador program. Council directed staff to conduct further research on the request. Staff is now recommending that a short term working group. That'll stretch it out for a day or two. <laughs> uh, with two councillors and a number of community representatives. Uh, be formed to fully consider the draft, the draft sports ambassador policy. Uh, do we have to go down that road? Uh, <coughs> <laughs> I thought, like, we have the cultural ambassador. There's another guidelines there that would be well, quite similar. Or? Well, hopefully that will facilitate that. Yeah. I think the difference is there's actually an organization through the CDC that okay. sort of manages that. We need to kind of figure out how this well, might might work from a sports perspective. So there is a there is an option for recommendations here. Anyone wants to move them, then we can beat it to death if we wish. Councillor Morrison. So I'd like to move the recommendation, and with the appointment of um, my two colleagues who sit on the Recreation um, Commission, Councillor Page and Councillor Renwick, um, to be the councillors appointed, and they can arm wrestle as to who wants to be the How chair. How easy was that? I'll second that. <laughs> okay, move I, I did second. have a question when we. These might be the questions you would bring up to what the committee, since you've been I, appointed that to is it, right? Question. That is the question that we're not hemmed in going into this. But like for me, I read this. Um, and uh, it, this really feels like work that needs to be over at recognition. Yeah. Um, because we have so many of our athletes and facilities, and they're, this is very much a regional thing. Is this the kind of stuff that the working group will be able to kind of identify and maybe possibly push this over to Rec 5. Uh, I think uh, you wouldn't get it done in two months. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. That's the that, first thing. This is a good uh, you can process. certainly, 
engage them. Uh, certainly the Cultural Development Committee is a city uh, out, you know, recognition. We're promoting the city of Nelson, um, not necessarily the region. Um, you know, as we found out in this election, and, you know, I think people are, you know, we're not necessarily, you know, centric to Nelson-centric or Nelson region, but it's certainly one of the um, premises of, of that is to celebrate Nelson and that can be greater Nelson where um, I just don't know if it would have the same impact if I'm the ambassador of the regional district of Central Kootenai <coughs> versus I'm the ambassador of the city of Nelson. But you, you know that you can certainly have that discussion but I, I think the intent is similar to the CDC that um, Nelson has prominence in, out there in the in the uh, greater world and, and and is something a city is something everybody understands versus a regional district is sort of a um, a BC centric sort of model so uh, Councillor Morrison first and then Councillor Wood no just in, in regards to what um, Councillor um, Page bringing up maybe I'm missing it but I mean I, I don't think that this is I think that we can engage rec 5 I mean because we need to be out and looking and making sure that we're covering all ground and obviously, just as much as we don't point somebody that lives within the city boundaries um, to be the cultural ambassador, neither would I see us having the sports ambassador necessarily, you know, living living across the street from me. So I think we do have um, a regional impact. And I think that when we select these worthy people, we talk about where they are and, and what they do. and. And I think it's reflected back whether or not they come from within the city of Nelson or regionally. And they're, they're, they're representing the, the region I see for the most part in going out. But I think this is definitely something we could have on an agenda for a, a rec meeting. And that's why I wanted to move forward with your names as being on the recreation um, commission to Unless be able to engage them. And that's the conversation you'd have at the committee. That's what the committee would do is say, oh, we need to go to the rec commission or to you know, broaden that out. You'd have that option to do that. So, I'm sorry. Woodward. I was I just sit on the CDC and um, what I see around that table is just you know a lot of uh, organization and information crossing paths and it's really uh, they do a lot in a very short period of time and I, I could see this as such a benefit to having this happen mm -hmm. for the sports community and I think regionally um, too and the the um, I mean just like look at the mural festival coming out of the CDC mm -hmm. and how you know quickly that's grown in a very short period of time and I think you know this could be super beneficial for for our town sports community yeah and I agree and I, I think along that line of thinking the rec commission what that was the ver vision that people had decades ago of bringing everyone together under a table where we could work as a region towards the goals for sports and recreation be it within the city of Nelson or be it, uh, out in area E or F and and What's kind of missing at times over that commission is these feel-good components that bring everybody together, mm -hmm. and maybe that's some of the missing pieces. So that that was my comment, and it sounds like we can pursue that further. So I'm yeah, I'm satisfied mm -hmm. at this point. Yeah, and maybe the outcome is the people that select the the ambassador is the rep commission. Yep. That might be a yep. model because we need some body to yep. make these decisions. The, the, there's a slight difference with the sports side in that a lot of the teams are made up of people from the region. Mm -hmm. right? So it's not like in many cases on the cultural development, you could easily find people from within the community. Mm -hmm. But you may, you know, you may have your star athlete could live at six miles, but mm -hmm. plays for a team out of the city or sure. or as a gymnast in the mm -hmm. gymnastics club. So you're right. All, that's the kind of stuff the committee can figure out themselves. <laughs> Uh, you want to stay on the committee, or do you want us to pull you off there? Stay on there? Okay, you're on. All in favor? Carried. Thanks very much. All right, what are we doing now? Repeal of the sidewalk sign policy. We're doing pretty good here, guys. You know what it's like? Uh, so okay, we're, going, we're looking at the policy overlap with the sidewalk uh, cafe bylaw, and we've dealt with this already. So now we're sort of finishing up the details of it. Uh, Council's had an opportunity to speak to this. And there's two recommendations there for moving. I'll move one. Councillor Woodward, second by Councillor Morrison. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, 
All in favor? Carried. And number two? I'll move to second. Councillor Morris and Councillor Anderson second. Any questions or comments? Hearing none. All in favor? Carried. You thought that bright shirt you would have me looking over there and you'd be moving the second step all night. <laughs> this place just needs a little color sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, onward and on to the next one. Okay, here we go. We can hammer away at Colin here now if you want. <laughs> We're at the uh, quarterly council, uh, the update financial. And if you have any questions for Colin, here's your time to ask him. I'll uh, move it so we can have discussion. Receipt. Second, uh, second. Financial update. And second by Councillor Renwick. Mm -hmm. Okay. Questions, Councillor Page. I know yeah, you have a couple. Give a preamble. I, I don't. I just uh, again <laughs> didn't know how council wanted to go through it. Some of them are new. I just wanted maybe just a sort of just something that I instituted when I first started at the city. And reason why is because we are a big organization, and but at six months it's a good time to take a look at things, see if things are going on the rails, because then we've got six months to try to correct it. Mm -hmm. And I also know for council it's very important that they know both the positives and the negatives of what's happening. A lot of times it it kind of speaks for itself. A couple of years ago we had such a big dump of snow and they were like why is transportation well we had you know, people kind of kind of go oh, yeah right I mean it's uh, it was a huge year of snow and that makes sense so a part of it's just trying to put it together and um, again reminding or sometimes it's questions about like why are things different than last year one of the things that I even just pointed out for myself was like other revenue budget it's five million this year last year it was 3.8 you might say well what's up with that uh, when we at first uh, were doing the budget um, at that time, Hydro thought that the TELUS project would bring in about a million dollars. That actually, as you've known from our latest, uh, uh, has jumped a bit. But uh, when we did the budget, that's why, and that's why it's at that number. Um, and again, think overall, it's important for council to realize that um, there tends to be a real track or a trend on a lot of these expenses. And so when you start seeing on a analytical basis, it's what, what, where the red flags go off, it kind of shows. And I try to give a, a, an update as to why, not for everything, obviously, because there's thousands of accounts. But but overall, when we start seeing things trend that way, that's a good a good sign. Like one of them even for like protective services, most of the protective services, a lot of their expenses are salaries. So in one sense, you would start to expect to kind of see them land on a place that would be one twelfth of the year. Not always, but I mean, that, and then if not, why? Uh, other other things like parks. Parks may not have a lot in the, you know up in June thirtieth, but then by the time we get to the third quarter, you're like, wow, we've almost spent all the parks money. And then you think about it and you say, yeah, that makes sense. We've done most of the grass cutting and that sort of thing. Um, transportation, again, a lot of that can play or seems to be affected by uh, snow. Although um, what has also trended in the past is you'll see maybe a dip in uh, the, the budget for transportation, but parks will be over budget. Mm -hmm. And one of those will be because we kind of hire the same amount of people, uh, there can be the advantage when we don't have a big snow year down here and pushing snow that's going to melt, but then we can maybe have them working in parks earlier where we get more value added. So again, we keep the same employees working, but they're maybe just directed into a different area. So as a net whole, you're mostly going to be contained inside what your budget amount is. But it's again, some of those explanations for council. Um, and again, always trying to highlight where things are coming because I know that you need to have sort of that um, answer for your, your resident or commercial owner that sees you on the street and says, hey, what's happening with this? Um, also, just, you know, I know uh, for a lot of you, it's quite interesting to me, a couple of things that have happened, as, as an example, that we're looking at uh, getting an SUV for the police, but we're getting a hybrid model. Uh, again, the police vehicles are way different than any other vehicle because they basically run 24-7. They don't usually ever turn off. And so it would be quite telling, actually, to see what kind of battery package they would need to have. Um, and again, if they're not idling, uh, with the engine running out, again, part of it will be to see how that kind of plays out. But So some of those things that we are looking at as staff to try to see where we can find ways, especially because we've done a really good job in many of our buildings and that sort of thing, but fleet is one that uh, tends to be a big GHG contributor, and what we are looking at places where we would be able to um, to, uh, to start find some uh, solutions to that. People so are again, flocking from all over the world to rob banks and nothing. <laughs> the, the battery's That's dead. <laughs> the battery's dead. The battery's <laughs> dead. Turn the key. The battery's dead. Yes, for sure. Um, other than that, like I said, uh, other thing also that tends to happen is that we will be in the process of either um, in the RFP process. A lot of things happening kind of in the fall. We talk about pretty big budget this year for paving, and I think as we went out for uh, dinner today, you saw a bunch of signs. I saw the big. Asphalt eater uh, parked on the street down there. So, 
I can also be prepared that we've got a lot of paving to happen in the next little while and some of that's going to be on some of our busy streets so I think as council it's important to be aware when the phone starts ringing about I'm trying to get somewhere and what's happening here but I think also many would agree some potholes in some of those uh, areas will be nice to have that with some nice new pavement involved and so yes open up to any questions that people have. Um, I just noticed a tax deferment yeah. yes it's yes steadily and I'm just wondering is it because of the aging population? Is it because people are challenged to pay their taxes or they're saying, eh, let the kids pay it or whatever? It's a great question, Mayor. Um, I think that when I've seen on assessed values how much what's happened for Nelson as a whole over the, even the past five years, this doesn't surprise me when I think about yeah, maybe the fixed incomes. Comes. The other part that I thought was important um, and works right now is that as you defer this, uh, you know the, the interest rate's pretty low exactly, yeah. right That's so right. again that was a, a factor as well that I saw you're not going to get that low rate on certain things so even if you're borrowing if you're put, maybe hopefully you're putting that money towards some other debt but again a lot of these people at 55 or seniors probably don't have a lot of debt but you're not getting hit really hard uh, with an interest expense it is a bit higher if you are in the family's uh, side that yeah it is for sure yeah. As well. yeah but no we we started doing this a couple years ago just kind of be a trends on some of the things we're seeing uh, including you know just even our homeowner grants where we're seeing more more people taking advantage of doing that online um, yeah I know that's yeah, yeah. so yeah. Uh, the other thing I just was going to note too because we were um, a positive positive effect we had thought even in 2018 was our, our delinquency was down <laughs> so those that hadn't paid um, and in fact in 2019 it did jump a bit but that was actually two properties that uh, didn't uh, didn't pay on time so that was a bit of a surprise to us but um, Again, I was maybe wanted to communicate to council that it wasn't a run on a whole bunch of homeowners that weren't able to pay their taxes, but uh, actually some bigger properties that uh, didn't pay. Any questions? No, oh, this is great. Any more questions? Okay. I have a question. <laughs> um, so the, the number that popped out at me looking at the uh, tax notices versus the customers on pre-authorized payment, uh, could you give me a little bit more of a description on how our pre-authorized payment payment program works and is it an, enough of an incentive because what, what we yeah great great question uh, Councillor Page uh, one has to remember too that the banks are big on this right they also offer a lot of well, well you know when you make your mortgage payment you give us that additional amount that keeps it with them mm -hmm. right they do offer interest same as the city does uh, but that's one thing that we, that we are seeing that there are a lot of pre-authorized payments but they we kind of get this check in the last uh, week of June there from the banks so people are doing that as for us yes when you come in uh, so if you're saying people are doing it but they're just doing it differently I think they're not always with the city level. and certainly uh, whenever we have people coming in that either um, are, are you know, it's, it's, it can be quite a lump sum to pay in June and so that's usually <laughs> the time when people are coming in to pay that that we have that opportunity to um, get them on a payment plan at that, that time of conversation uh, same with our water and sewer because we do have that those numbers going forward that we like to get people on the payment plans it helps them not to get that sticker shock at the time uh, other people say you know I'm gonna either leave it in my bank account and take care of it or my bank you know does it for me so that tends to be some of the answers that we get perfect was... Councillor, just a follow-up to that so um, for the people that are paying pre-authorized and paying say monthly to the city um, is the city um, holding that and is that is that money accruing any interest Yes, so we do pay interest on that amount. So uh, when if someone was to say, hey, I paid $150 a month um, as your money kind of uh, was paid off as of you know, July 1st, as that number grows, yes, we are applying. There's a, there's a formula inside the system, so those that are on pre-authorized would have their payment, and then each month there's an interest component. So it would grow each month. So it would take until you know, sometime in maybe December where the numbers start to get big enough that you're getting a few dollars. And again, the interest rates are still pretty low right now. But yes, we do do that. Okay, so that's kind of come back in. Yeah. Yes, and it hadn't been for quite. Uh, it hadn't been for quite a while because I I used to do that. Yes. I used to keep my pay, yeah. <laughs> my city pay, yeah. for years. I never took a paycheck. I just left it in there to. Right. Pay my tax bill. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and just again, as you can see, we're a pretty busy city. Yeah. And all that's going right. on, and all that's happening. And again, just one other uh, shout out there too is just that on the grit chamber, because uh, the last couple of summers here, we have had a few 
rain events, but it seems that this year. Yes, yeah, so you better let us know what the grit chamber is. Oh, I, I okay, know it is. Uh, okay, okay fair enough. Not, right? So uh, the grit That's chamber um, and the surge tank. So what it is is that was the development that people would have seen. That was down by the wholesale club. And they basically a very large tube um, that sort of when we get those major downfall uh, falls of water, that it kind of allows that to sort of hit that that tube and sort of balance in there before it then goes uh, and again part of that is that whatever grid is carrying the the gravity part of being in that tube allows it to fall so that also doesn't get shot out because you can imagine from that location at the airport lift station that's where there's a pump that is sending all of the product out to the sewage treatment plant underneath the lake so you can imagine how powerful it is so anytime we can take any gravel and items like that out of that being shot through there and you know almost like an internal sandblaster going on so that's been very successful but more importantly is is that if we have this rush of water that comes and we don't contain it and then it all comes out to the out to the uh, sewage treatment plant that's not a good thing it's really hard on the system there so this surge tank allows us to kind of collect that water and then allow it to balance it a bit and then flow it out a little more evenly and that's been very helpful for, for the, the, the city yeah, yeah. And we did that with some of our storm sewers a few years back too, Kevin. The huge yep. <coughs> containers that catch the silt right. high up and mm -hmm. so it's not going out in the lake and so forth. And then you pump them out every so often. And, and sorry, not one, sorry, just not last one. It wouldn't surprise uh, council and or the community that uh, we've got a lot of development going on. And so we're seeing uh, quite a bit, you know, lift in fees, whether it's for uh, just residential and some of the larger uh, projects that are on, uh, but as well uh, some of the sewer and water connections that come with some of those larger uh, projects are also impacting. And that revenue, of course, uh, when you have those sewer and water connection fees, understanding that they're buying into a system that's already in place, um, that money goes, you know, it stays inside those funds. So again, it's not going into their operations, but that money will go directly into the sewer fund or the water fund as connection fees. Okay, and that, that report on buildings in there, amount of uh, Thank you. value of the total projects and the revenue that's coming into us from them at this time. Okay, um, we've received the financial report then. Uh, all in favor? Jerry, thanks very much. And we're on now to um, agendas and minutes from the various committees and so forth, and then we have action items at the end. So if you want to move receipt of those, or if there's something you wanted to pull out of, as an example, the, um, sorry, this keeps, the, uh, where the heck am I? CDC or any of the, you know, the Economic Development Partnership, any of those, you're more than welcome to pull them out and speak to them if you wish. I know that some of you attend those meetings, etc. but if not, the paperwork's fine. Mm -hmm. I did that one. You did one, okay. Fair enough. Um, for the reports, I was looking at the, the building permit statistics. Uh, uh, you're now on reports. So, okay. Oh, sorry. So can we go, I'll sorry. move, I'll no. move for receipt, receipt of, of, uh, of the minutes, minutes I'll agenda second minutes. Second. All in favor? Oh, sorry. Carry it. No, we're on reports. Thanks very much. Okay. So, yeah, I was looking at the building permit statistics, and under under this month of July, we've got four, four permits in 2018 that were worth $500,000, I'm assuming, as a total. <laughs> and in 2019, there's three that are worth more than a million. Is that... Like, I was, I was having a hard time looking at those single-family homes. Like, how, how is this being expressed? That, <clears throat> in terms of the table, that would be... So the there's, there's a the commercial industrial is 917, and the single-family is 193,000. Well, like, the total of these four houses were doing building permits worth half a million last year, but now three of them are doing work yeah, that's I, over a million? It's just very project-specific? Exactly. So if yeah. I'm I'm building a, you know, a larger, single-family home, you know, um, that's that's an average of, Half you know, million. just about three hundred thousand a house, which is, not, you know, that seems very reasonable. Um, yep. <coughs> you know, in single-family units, I believe those also include, um, for example, uh, constructing a suite in a. In a property, so you might have that would be considered a, a unit. So yeah, really measuring gap. units, yeah. So yeah, it can vary quite significantly depending on on what type of 
residential it's unit. It's not hard to get half a million, up to half a million to build no, a house. No, I appreciate yeah. that. Just the gap between the years. Yeah, uh, yeah so I think that's just what's the story in here. Yeah, yeah, that would be just. We can uh, get that additional information, but I would okay. suggest that's it's good. it's and on what you're building. Okay, thanks. Okay. All in favor? Proceed. Thank you. Move action, items. action items. Move receipt of the action items. Second that. Second by Councillor Woodward. All in favor? Carried. Late items. We have a late item request here from Nelson. Uh, Nelson Kootenay Lake Tourism has submitted an application to the Rural De Development Fund for future development of the digital kiosk and they're applying for a grant and they'd like a letter of support from us. Mm -hmm. Everybody got a chance to read this, yeah. hopefully. I'll, I'll move by that. Councillor Woodward, second by Councillor Page. Questions or comments? All in favor? Sherry. All right. Uh, motion to adjourn. Really? You broke a flipping record. Wow. <laughs> My record. Who was talking about 1030? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to wear a Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> yeah. Yes. More often. <laughs> It'll be a different right, thanks very much, everybody. You'd rather yeah. be here till 10. Hey, Bill, sorry I missed you today. I phoned down today, but I missed you. Hey. That's okay. I'll come back to you right now. This, um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. I got you now. This is interesting. Yeah. Fish and John, thank you. No, you guys are the fish. Not me. <laughs>